Yo, what's up? Welcome back to Shock Our Law, guys. What we say, what we say. And you don't get upset. I'm going to sound weak on the pod. It's been a little hectic here in the shop. We've been figuring out what we're going to continue to move on with some things. And I feel like with that being said, we should start off the show with saying how we will not be attending the next Villain Arts Convention, which is the Baltimore one. Baltimore it's um, too expensive. It'll be a loss for us to do it. Um, I don't know what's up with the Air- Airbnbs in uh, um, Baltimore, but they're really expensive. So it's like it's making it a little bit difficult to actually do the convention. I mean, we can still do it, but I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah. So I think for us is um, we're deep, right? And and in getting three booths and bringing nine people with us, it means that we need a lot of hotel rooms yeah. and or like a big ass Airbnb. Um, finding an Airbnb that is big enough for all of us is ridiculous, right? It doesn't, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. And so I am quite certain that we will be able to fill the slots right at home. Uh, so this year we will not be doing Baltimore. However, um, you want to talk about the convention that you and yeah. have in Virginia? We have, um... Is it Virginia, North Virginia. Carolina? No, Virginia, Virginia. Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Yep. Yeah. Um, for the anime uh, con, right? Anime con? Yep. Yeah, so sh- shout out to Anime Con because they're going to do um, the anime tattoo convention in Virginia, which we are part of. Um, it's going to be Ace and I. We're going to be tattooing there for the weekend. I'm pretty sure John is coming because he's all into anime stuff. Um, I'm pretty excited to do this because this is like a specific convention. It's not just a convention yeah, for yeah. everybody. This is specifically targeted for the anime fans out there. So I get to showcase some of the anime pieces that I have yeah. because I do want to do more anime pieces, obviously. Um, so it's cool to actually do it. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. So. Do you have any pieces that you're looking forward to doing? Yeah, I'm um, designing a piece. And it's funny because when I say I design, I design in my head. So when I get to the tablet, it's like 10, it's like a minute, yeah, yeah. a two, five, whatever it right. takes, right? Um, but I have this piece of, I want Pikachu fighting Goku, and in between both of them trying to break up the fight is Mario. So, you know so what like I'm saying? Iconic characters I want to do then. three different yeah. iconic characters to That's see, dope. and it'll be a cool piece to put at, you know, as a, if there's a contest, I don't put know. Put it in. I think they do have contests. Are yeah. you looking to make it like a thigh piece, an arm piece? A thigh uh, piece, and it's going to be um, Bill. My man Bill's going to ride with us. Oh, so the, uh, dope. He's going to be my Saturday appointment. You did Transformer. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And that won an award for you. Yeah, yeah for real. Yeah, so so cool. he's going to come through um, to always sh- show support. He always he has always come through to every single... We love Bill, man. Yeah. Thank um, you, Bill, for being such a writer. He's fucking yeah. dope. Shout out to Bill, man. He's awesome. Is this going to be like the first uh, anime convention that you've done? Or is this yeah. even the first one that they're throwing? So it's not the first one. Okay. I think the name of the convention, like the, the official name is Anime Inc. Okay. Con. Okay. Um, and from my understanding, they've been doing it. They've been doing oh, it. Um, I think this is it. their second year doing it. But prior to that, they were in partnership with somebody else under a different name. And we're doing anime conventions for tattoo artists. Gotcha. Um, so this is our first year that we will be participating, but hopefully not our last year participating. Yeah, right? this is going to be yeah. pretty fun. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. So for someone like myself just joining into the industry and going to the villain arts conventions and learning, like even with this one, the anime one, that there's like the Empire conventions and anime one the villain arts what makes villain arts stand out for the other conventions and why is that such a favorite for uh, you guys they've been doing it longer okay. and they've been like pioneers of the industry for a while yeah so i think villain arts their first convention was actually in philadelphia with like um, what was his name tattoo eddie or tattoo philadelphia eddie Philly, him. yeah Philly eddie. um so they've been doing it 25 or 26 years i oh, think um mm-hmm. so they've definitely helped move the industry forward significantly and i think that they also help pave the way for artists to be more um, accepted in places like restaurants and hotels. Because I'm going to keep it real, like when we invade a city, it's a lot of us. Yeah. It's a lot you of tell. heavily tattooed yeah. people. Like the you vibe. Just, you can walk into whatever store yeah. and you'll find somebody with full of tattoos. Yeah. And most likely they're part of the convention. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can tell. So, cool. But, but I've also th- I also think that, that they've definitely opened that door for us to be able to kind of like be more accepted in these places. Granted, there are some hotels that Will not allow artists and yeah, big whatnot. groups of like artists. I remember yeah. seeing at a hotel with um, this owner of the shop I used to work at Staten Island. I remember being in a hotel, and one of the, 
One of the things that I experienced was a group of artists took a chair, one of those chairs from the lobby, whatever. Mm -hmm. They took it upstairs to like whatever floor they were at. They took a shit on it. And then they put it in the elevator and sent it to the first floor. So when it opens, it's just like a bomb. You know what I'm saying? Um, so these are the things that, like, you, we the hotels don't condone shit like that. So then it gives us a bad reputation as artists because that's not, that's that's not, not what we yeah. all do. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel that that's still predominantly what the industry is like? Yeah, because everybody wants to be a rebel. They're free freelancer. I, nobody tells me what to do. This is my own job. I make my own money. I get to do whatever I want. But that doesn't, like, give you the right to be a fucking asshole in society. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. then you're giving me a fucking bad name. Because when I say I'm a tattoo artist, then you kind of get a little bit of that look. Like, uh, you know this what I'm saying? got to watch out for this guy. Have you seen a shift in that, in that way in the past couple of years? Or do you feel that it's still on that same track? I can't even tell right now, man. Because so we're I so focused into what we're doing personally. Yeah, that 100%. Before I met her and before this whole thing, I used to actually hang out with, like, uh, artists. Yep. Like, I used to be with mad different artists. I used to travel to a shop. I used to hang out. I used to know what artists were doing, scheme for shit, mm -hmm. you know, the city. I, I got to know, like, the industry a little bit more because I was connected more with the artists. Yeah. So I don't know how it is now, but when I started up at the beginning, there was a lot of crazy artists and a lot of, like, Fucked up shit that, that you was going on. Yeah, 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 like a lot of fucked up shit. You know so what I mean? from my experience, I guess I didn't have that submersive experience that he did within the industry. Um, I guess as an onlooker in the beginning, um, I can definitely say that the experience at a tattoo convention has drastically shifted. Um, tattoo conventions were fucking wild. They were a party to say the least. Um, and I feel like now it's more inclusive in regards to you see more children walking around yeah. um there's like merch and shit for kids um they had like a bounce house not and stuff face that painting not got, stuff okay. that was there before yeah. before it was like titties and whipped cream everywhere um and i just so, yeah, so I can see, that you take your kids right, like Philadelphia Philly was yeah. not a the place to New take Jersey, your children. The one in uh, Secaucus. Okay, I don't know what. That was crazy as hell too. No, that one there were kids there, but like the only thing is wood? they were like Hell's Angel everywhere, no, no. so it took over a whole the, entire section. And it was like a little bit like the Wildwood was always like family friendly because okay, it's right on the boardwalk. But Philadelphia, my experience in Philadelphia was I love the owners of the Wildwood Convention. They're yeah. fucking you awesome. know they know they no longer own it. They probably sold it. To Villain Arts. Oh. Villain Arts runs the Wildwood Convention now. Yeah, I mean, I think that they still, like, work it a little bit, but they are, they definitely don't have oh, okay. so as much yeah, so of that. So, speaking about that, I just saw that they're doing, uh, Villain Arts is doing Charlotte and San Diego for the first time this year. Speaking on, like, the Anime Con, does Villain Arts buy out, like, those places or those venues and be like, hey, yeah, we want to take this If it makes over. money, they look at yeah. it like, you know, I want to buy it from you. And so. it makes sense, right? Because yeah. if, if, you're, if you're making... Two hundred thousand dollars on a convention, right? And you have to put in all this work in order for you to make those, those two hundred k. And here comes somebody who's like, "I pay two million, yeah. and now it belongs to me forever." And they have the following, they have the resources, they have um, they everything already. They, they have, have the, the team. They got their marketing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they they have they have the they're the known leg by work. every company. Like when you talk about like. Uh, ink companies they're known by yeah, yeah. suppliers just to call artists, artists. Like yeah. Famous yeah. Or and I mean there's other tattoo um, conventions for sure like Motor City Hell City um, yeah. uh, Golden Golden Gate Golden Gate Tattoo Expo yeah. isn't that what it's called Golden State Golden State Golden Hell City yeah so there's there's other tattoo conventions throughout the state that are also good yeah. they're just not as not as known not as popular as Villain Arts for the public. Okay. okay. Right? Because really good tattoo artists know about Hell City and they know about Motor City and they know about like these other big tattoo conventions. Mm -hmm. They're just more known amongst artists than there is uh, amongst people. Yeah. yeah. The general public. Yeah. I'm doing. With not going to Baltimore, we will be replacing that date with the anime Sip and Paint. No. 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 So we're not doing anime, Sip and okay. Paint. Anime has been moved to August. You want to talk a little bit about anime? Yeah, so we're looking forward to this event that we're trying to develop. It's a Pokemon theme event. We're going to do um, Pokemon flashes. We're going to have uh, somebody in the front that sells Pokemon cards. Like vendors. Uh, we're going to do like some trading and stuff for Pokemon cards. And we're going to try to get like food truck vendors. 
that are also like Asian inspired cuisine and stuff like that to try to get this whole theme in there. I'm yeah. working. I think it's a That's cool be really dope. day to dedicate to like Pokemon fans out there because yeah. there's a lot more Pokemon fans than I ever than I ever could yeah. imagine. Like I have 40 year old guys and 45 year old guys sitting in my chair, like they're collectors. They collect yeah. this shit. And when I say they have cards, they have cards. We have, we have a heavy and you wouldn't think because these so. are like a construction worker foreman <laughs> or a business owner, and they have fucking like Pokemon, Pokemon cards, yeah. which is insane. Yeah. I mean, it's not insane because I at one point I used to collect a whole bunch of Pokemon cards. They got stolen and my yeah. dad threw some away, but. To see that from the time that I was 13 years old and I'm 37 and it's still fucking like on this event, you'll be yeah, able still to still relevant. See. That's insane, man. So I'm not so much a gamer, but I can appreciate how Pokemon brings families together. And I say it because he used to collect Pokemon, uh, like Pokemon cards, and now our daughter does. And it's something that it's like really cute to watch them like geek over it. It's, no, cool. it's like, oh, you guys. <laughs> it's cool because I get to bond with her. Yeah. Like, well, you know, for some Pokemon cards yeah. and stuff. So for the event, we're looking to have food trucks. We're looking to have some entertainment. We're looking to have some vendors. And so parents, when we do this, make sure you log on to our Instagram and check our YouTube to make sure that this event is actually um, going to be successful and yeah all that. So like then, like help us make this a success so then, yeah so then you could bring your kids and it's it's a point of mingling with your kids because sometimes like when you have kids it's like what do you have in common because we're working during school and we barely have time with each other so when we all get home either we want to relax and want to play games so there's still time apart away from each other but we don't know each other we don't know what we really like what we really love so the fact that i found something that my daughter loves that i used to like as well um, it's awesome. It gives me like um, a bonding experience yeah, with my own daughter. So I'm pretty moment. sure for all you parents out there, if you want to find some type of way to bond with your kids and they like collect Pokemon cards, like bring them over to our shop. So another reason why we decided to do it in August is so um, children are out of school. You know what I mean? Right. And and it can be like an, a whole day family event yeah. here at the shop, which I think is really cool. So in place of um, the anime Sip and Paint, we are going to do a spring Sip and Paint really cool. because it is spring. Um, as, as you can tell, well, they can't tell, but I can yeah. tell it's raining outside. It's been raining all week. Um, so we're looking to do a spring Sip and Paint right now. We're kind of like trying to figure out the logistics because people love when you host our Sip and Paint. Yeah, I but do you're booked for 11 paints. hours on that day. I'm saying I could... Uh, tattoo earlier that day. Okay. And still do the sip and paint. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know me, I, I don't mind working. I'm made for that shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah so uh, spring sip and paint. Megan will be say. dropping the ad um, after our Flash Friday. Flash Friday, oh, when you no, guys yeah, see this, will be, be passed. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure it'll be quite a success. This <laughs> sip and paint, I'm going to make it a lot easier, too. Okay. Um, and we're also going to have Soyu. Because I want everybody to experience, experience. that, and taste that. So true. Um, it's gonna be really good. It's like this Asian drink that we were put on by um, Yadi Yankee, right? Yadi. Yadi. <laughs> by Shadi, Shadi Yankee. Shadi Yadi. <laughs> um, she hooked us up with some soyu, and we loved it ever since. So to the point that last week we went somewhere and we got some. We did. So I think that it's it's really cool to know how um, Jaddy has come. Jaddy, in case you guys don't know, is our apprentice who has just started tattooing on fake skin. Um, and she's very, like, shy and quiet. And so I feel like Philadelphia really, <laughs> Philadelphia, I'll show you, <laughs> really helped her come out of her shell yeah, and kind of, like, um, fit her family a little better. Yeah, and it, I do think that maybe we should take the people who are becoming apprentices into the Philadelphia Convention, not to tattoo, but for them to experience. Yeah. yeah. And then from there, we'll see, yeah. like, how they react. Well, if Jay's... They, if they really want to do this. Our, 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 our media guy here, yeah. Jaden... He's also an apprentice. ...is now an apprentice. So, um, me ahead. personally, I was, I was super excited for Baltimore because once, once I had the opportunity, like, presented to me in my head, I'm like, all right, Timeline-wise, Baltimore, if I'm already apprenticing by that time, I'll know I'll be able to break down, bust down stations, do stencils, all that stuff, like run around, get like a, a real apprentice feel for it. So that's the only reason why I'm a little bummed by it. But we still do have upcoming ones, and then we do have the one in Tampa, which is a little further out. So yeah. I'm I'm super excited to like. So we're doing Tampa, um, but the if, thing is if you, you have and Jody experience the convention before becoming an artist. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. in the situation where we had with this chick, what's her fucking name? It um, doesn't matter. Moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking her. That like girl. Her, uh -huh. uh, her. Yes, just keep it. That shit intimidated. Yeah. Her whatever. I don't know what the fuck situation, but it uh, this convention intimidates a lot of people, or it shows their true colors. Yeah. And our shop has a funny way of of cleansing itself, yeah. especially during Philly convention. So the fact that Jody went and you went, 
and now you either want to become an artist or Jadi's now taking it more serious yeah, because yeah. of the experience as opposed to almost becoming an artist and getting, getting that experience. Getting serious, yeah, yeah. It's completely different. You know what I'm saying? So I think we should put apprentices through the Philly convention yeah. and push them through. Yeah. Like, you know if, I mean? if you make it, you make it. And if you don't make it, peace out. out. <laughs> Before we peace out, Chakra Out Loud will be taking on Rolling Out Loud this summer. <sighs> It's gonna be a great yeah, time. Mrs. Yeah. Smiley will be doing like a piece. A clapping thing? Yes, for <laughs> real. We gotta, we gotta get these buttons hooked up. Then we have to go on. We have new songs. We have new ones. But well, he could just add the clapping. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can add it on. But Smiley be but doing a piece. It's gonna be Chakra Out Loud at Rolling Loud, which is gonna be sick because we're gonna take this on the road and we're gonna be uh, interviewing rappers and stuff celebrities i want to interview rappers strippers because they also have stories so it's not just uh hype up rappers and shit let, let, can can we so just start with we will be attending rolling out loud with all axes passes all axes passes bro um have you so seen what people be, wear to rolling out loud so it's gonna yeah. be my wife me and Jaden. <laughs> um, we're gonna loud be backstage exclusive content for yes, you yes we're gonna be with the biggest of the biggest people yeah. backstage and we have an opportunity to actually um, advertise ourselves and even come up with some cool questions for these yeah. rappers. So this yeah. is this is our first time doing Rolling Out Loud. We've never done it, and, and now I'm like, we're mad old. <laughs> Let's enjoy this, okay? <laughs> yeah. But you will be doing a piece at Rolling Loud, correct? So I don't think he's actually tattooing. Are you tattooing? I don't know. I don't no, know I'm before. tattooing the day before Rolling okay. Loud, but they told me to bring my equipment and shit to be in the back. Oh, okay, just in case. Because you, you just, you just never don't know. know. Yeah. You Even know if it's saying. like a little... Someone, yeah, someone might so be like, I want I'm going to carry with me in my backpack yeah, and all that. It's going to be dope, cool. man. Little, We're going to go there to grind. Before I go perform. I'm planning on grinding. Like, this is an investment. Yeah. Um, And I have to make it work. Yeah, no, you will. You know, you, you are, you are the money that I invested in this, I will get back. You're a yeah. hustler. Within. There's no, there's no, you're not making that. Gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Rolling Loud and wake up like the next morning and like <laughs> scroll through Instagram and be like, Yo, Smiley, why you want World Star right now? <laughs> like that's that is the goal. So, yeah, Shocker Out Loud will be taking on Rolling Out Loud. Like I said, we, that will be in the summer. We will be talking more about it when we approach the time. Shout out to Underscore Records. You guys are awesome. When we'll, we what's love the artist names. Um, who is it that we're gonna beat, Breezy? Yeah, Breeze, yo. He's dope. Check out his fucking music. is fire. Um, he's going to be performing there. He's going to perform before Kanye West and right after Fabio. So he's in there, like, right in between two great people. Yeah. Yeah. So even by association, you're already good. That's fucking dope. Um, and they have him performing for at least... They haven't performed four times. Four sets, yeah. That's four dope. times That's in three crazy. days. So he's going to be fucking working. It's yeah. so dope to see somebody... You know, like actually push through and make it from nothing to like there. being, to one of the yeah. being next to two people road that road. are already up there. So shout yeah. out to Breeze, he's dope. He's a um, a native from Jersey. You know I'm what I'm saying? So shout out to my Jersey people because yeah. a lot of Jersey people don't support each other. Yo, out Jersey's there. been on, and uh, Jersey's right fucking popping right now, yo, with the St. Peter shit that happened yep. and. Now this whole performance thing, this is gonna be sick. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to her dressing a little bit ratchet, cause I don't really get that at the shop, cause you know modesty and all that shit. And there's a lot of people and shit, but I like to see titties. And you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I come from the hood, so these are the things that we like and shit. And it gets hot in Miami, but we're gonna head into the halftime break. We'll catch you guys when we get back. Yo, welcome back, guys. Half time show. Welcome back. So we just talked about going to Rolling Loud in Miami. Miami. The Miami heat gets to you a little bit because influencer, an influencer out there just um, uh, she might be doing some time, might not be doing some time. She fucking stab that. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see what she's doing. So this. I didn't know what you were doing. I thought you were jerking something. No, I was just stabbing. She's like this. I didn't know that was a knife. Like you didn't have nothing in your hand. <laughs> So I saw my peripheral view. I'm like, what? Not now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, this influencer, I think she has like two million on TikTok or Instagram or something. Um, stabbed her man. She's yep. like killed him. Like not just stabbed him. She stabbed and killed him. Um, and that's kind of crazy. Um it's, can, can you join me in this one? Yeah, I'm yeah. reading it right cool. now. <laughs> yeah, so she stabs him, um, and then they Baker Act her. And ba the, the Baker Act, from my understanding, is like when you plead insanity, and they send you to a mental institute. Now, I am a domestic violence survivor. 
it is said that there was a lot of domestic violence disputes in that household. So I don't want to jump the gun and be like, she's a murderer and or or say he beat her and that's why she killed him or whatever. Like whatever fuck happened in that house happened in that house. But she like. So you can't point fingers. No fingers. pointing. Yeah. Because you don't know if he was almost trying to beat the shit out of her. Right. And she defended herself or if she was the abuser in that relationship. Like we don't know which way that went. That's like overly defending yourself. It was said that the cops were called it around five to ten times within the past year. To the household. So. Ten times. Cops yeah. are called ten times to the household. Um, and, and yo, I've been there, and I'll tell you, that minute that you start to think about how you're going to end someone's life is when you need to get the fuck out. Yeah. Um, because um, though, yes, it sounds like, oh, that's a, that's an overkill. Well, you don't know the shit that people go through, you know what I mean, and how much of it yeah. they can take. Yeah. So, yeah, Miami bugged out this weekend with homegirl killing her man for whatever reason. But that's always Florida. Crazy, what are we man. bugging out, man? Florida's always tripping. I don't know what it is. Maybe we gotta ask the people when we out there. What do you think about Florida? Yeah, make, it makes the people bug out. I'm telling Maybe you, it's I think the heat. It's the heat. It has I to promise. Be the heat. It's the yeah, heat. it's the heat. That's a police officer, and they told me when summer comes around, they're way more busier. Yeah, and yeah. it's because of the heat. Yeah, hundred percent. People don't know how to act. Well, you figure you live there, you can get it together by yeah. now. Street niggas always get cranky in the heat when they're niggas be sweating <laughs> and shit trying to hustle and they just all cranky every fucking day, especially on Friday nights. Someone was in heat the other day on national television and had to display it for the entire world to see. Someone made a joke towards his girl and he didn't really like it too much. So his, his wife. His wife. His, uh, I'm well, okay, so so let's 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 talk about who we're talking about. We're talking about Will Smith and Chris Rock, yep. right? And and obviously his wife, right? Jada. Wife, yep. So Everybody discredits Will because she had an entanglement situation. But you've been in an open relationship before. Yeah. And so what happens? Yeah, what happens happens. Like that doesn't take away from shun this fucking chick for what she did for fucking some guy because they were in an open relationship. That was their agreement. It's just just that Will Smith didn't get caught or whatever the fucking thing. Because he fucked a whole bunch of dudes and mad bitches too at the same time. So nobody's talking about that shit, right? But when it comes to her, you know, she's a bad person. And it, and it sucks that, that it discredits their relationship because of their agreement. Like, everybody does love in however they do yeah. love. Um, so that's still his wife. Yeah. And obviously this was the straw that broke the camel's back for him. Right? Um, who, do you, who do you feel was in the wrong? Do you think Chris shouldn't have made the joke? Or do you think Will should have just stayed? Nah, oh, Will no. should have sat his ass down Will and relaxed. Should, this, this thing, he was bugging. Straight, straight, straight honestly, up. he was bugging. He shouldn't have done that. Like... Though, because the whole thing is like, nigga, that reaction that you gave that night is the reaction everybody expected when the whole situation with you and your wife was happening. Mm-hmm. Like everybody Why was not? smashing you on social media, but now you wanna you wanna redirect everybody's anger and hate towards you, whatever, to fucking everybody hates Chris. I don't, I don't <laughs> you know. You know what I'm saying? I don't, and, I don't know if that was a him thing or if if seeing his wife's reaction to it caused him to to want to protect yeah. her. No, it, it was the it was the last straw. It was For everybody him, yeah. in social media, and then it's like, okay, finally faded out. Nobody stopped. Everybody stopped talking about it. And then that night, it was like, okay, I'm supposed to win an award, and now this nigga talking some shit about my wife. Nigga, like he's a comedian, first of all, right? It is what it is. Because if I go to a comedy show and they start talking shit about her, I have to laugh. I'm sorry. You don't got a choice. She shouldn't yeah, sit in front row, because then you're gonna get snapped on. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a heckler, but he was like more than a heckler. This yeah. motherfucker went to beat up the the act, no, which is not cool. Will you know what I'm saying? He used all his willpower for that fucking smack, and it should have been done. It's unfortunate um, because it but was such an important. The moment positive for him. aspect of this is that Chris Rock is now gonna make more money. Because now he's booking shows. So did you know that he refused to talk about it in his last two shows? That what? He refuses to talk about the situation. Really? I don't know if he's creating content for it and then going to monetize that because he already has content it's out a for money this. Thing. It's everything. Um, all the actors right now, I mean, not the actors, all the comedians that because I, I follow the comedian pages, mm-hmm. they're all doing all jokes about, about the Will Smith thing. Ace just played me um a song yesterday and it was at the end of the song. He was like, I'll smack you. He was like, I'll smack the will out of you or like Chris. Or something. Oh, something. Oof, like people are already ouch, getting ouch. to it. Like, yeah. like, no, there's no chill. The internet has yeah, no chill. They'll no, come no, for you no. immediately. <laughs> Here we go. What you got? Um, this right here. Smack, smack the shit out of Chris Rock. Smack the taste Pick out of that nigga mouth. mouth. Chris Rock ain't even know what he got smacked about. Like keep my wife's name out your fucking hey, mouth. First things first, man. Shout out to Will, man. 
<laughs> that was quick. Yo, Yo the quick, memes quick. were out there. The internet has no chill. I've heard Jersey Club versions, EDM versions. <laughs> like, it's over for this. Yeah, man. I think there was an absolute overreaction on his end. Oh, man. What else yeah, you got? But, uh, fuck that, because they're not, not a big thing. Whatever. To end the day off, we always like to so. end it off with a Jersey high. The St. Peter's prep coach that made the Cinderella run to all the way to the Elite Eight has now gotten a job offer at Seton Hall and will be willingly taking the position. Very well deserved. Because yes. I think at some point I was like, get them coins, coach. Mm-hmm. That He went and secured that bag. It, it is clear that he was able to develop these players to the point that they got into the Elite Eight, right? Yep. And so to be able to do that with a group of players who are still developing is outstanding. I am looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with Seton Hall because Seton Hall has ballers, right? Like, yeah. Uh, what are we talking about here? Baseball? Basketball? Basketball. Basketball. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And now with I know the, MMA. Now, <laughs> now with the coach going to Seton Hall, uh, a lot of the players, including Doug Edder, one I think of he's the top three players, right? Yeah. Have not all um, went on to the transfer portal, hopefully to either go join their coach at Seton Hall or transfer to other D1 schools. My question Very deserving. for you. My question for you too. Um, you have a son right now, freshman, plays basketball right now. Yeah, Lucas. So I don't know if I should say no, that. No, it's okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, but it's okay. What do you guys look for in a coach? What do you think are like the proper etiquette and the things that you want? I need a stern, so that's so funny. strong coach okay. that's that's um that has compassion towards their their players. Okay. Okay. Speaks to them like like People. human beings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because even though they're kids and you're an adult. They're still humans, and yeah. they still understand. So some, my child responds better to positive reinforcement. He needs to be pushed, mm-hmm. right? And, and I mean pushed. Yeah, yeah. But if you encourage him to keep pushing, you're going to get more out of this yeah. kid than if you're like, you ain't shit, you ain't never going to be shit, you're not, you're weak, that, you're, the, you're not going to get anything not, from, yeah. from my kid. And so, however, they need structure. They need someone who's going like to push them. The, his coach for OB... Um, in OB high hoops, school over yeah. here for OB Hoops. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like the coach oh, no, like that's not OB Hoops. That's the, the high school. Oberish High School. Yeah. Like, the coach is a baseball player, and they, he's doing the basketball thing to help the kids out, which is awesome that he's doing that. But now everybody has a strong point in what they choose to do. Uh, and I feel like the coach lacks, like, sternness. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I feel like um, he's not made for the whole to be a basketball coach. He's too soft. And he just wants to clap everything that goes on. And it's like, no, like, you like, like no, no, no. He's just suit, like the, the, he the word, have a backbone. The, 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 the keyword here is that he's like, he's like a soft coach. He's mm-hmm. a pushover, so. yo. I got you. Like Ooh. straight up. You know what I'm saying? I, so <laughs> now I'm not saying to be a fucking douchebag. Yeah, 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 and, no, I, know, and I know what you mean. There's some coaches that they're, they're not taking like nothing. Like I, if you're a second late to practice, you're sprinting back So I think forth. that's bullshit too, right? Cause you know, like, is it the kid's fault that the parent was stuck in traffic at school or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, so I think that there needs to be like a happy medium. Um, I, my son has had training before Mm -hmm. and I see him perform better with a coach that can relate to him as a person than a coach who's like completely onto him all the time. Although it increases his skill, it decreases his motivation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't, he doesn't want to go to practice. And another thing is like these coaches and teachers, they got to stay relevant with times because there's a huge disconnect from the kids being 15 to you being 40 years old. There's a fucking gap in between that. You guys don't know each other. Yeah. So if teachers and coaches will be more relevant as far as social media goes, trending, know their kids. trending things, yeah. the kids will see them as somebody cool, somebody they can look up to be like, yo, I love my coach. I actually like going to practice, yeah. but to deal with a coach, they'll be like, yo, he's just a fucking asshole. Yo. So I you're think not, that the same, you're not looking yeah, to yeah, yeah you don't have nothing in common with him. Yeah. Nothing. It's and just then this he yells man at telling you what to do. Who isn't doing it himself. At you. Another person yeah. in society yelling, that you yeah. that you don't necessarily like it. You, yeah. like, you know what I mean? I think the St. Peter's coach is a player's coach. I think I think he he was able mm-hmm. to develop the strengths in his players, and I think that he was able to build relationships within his players, right? Because the relationship that players have with each other determines how the how the tone of the game is going to go, right? If you have somebody who's a fucking ball hog, then the game isn't. You're not going to get the same from your players. But if you have players who communicate, who kind of vibe with each other, who play with each other, who are genuinely enjoying the sport that they are playing, um, you can see how much further they go versus people who are like okay this is your position this is your position yeah, and this yeah, is what yeah, you're yeah. gonna do when you let people when you develop people and let them kind of do their thing i feel like that's that's what say the saint peter's coach did. he really developed these players that's and i think that he's gonna take that skill and like honestly like mba it. i'm waiting for it yeah yeah, yeah. we'd love to see it man yeah. we'd love to yeah, see yeah, yeah, on top definitely that is all we have for you guys today thank you so much Let's for watching go. Shock thank you Loud. once again 
It's very important for you to hit the up like button, subscribe, and let the and algorithm know that we're here for you and that you like our content. If you are a small business owner, please get in contact with us. We would love to feature your business on our podcast. So just send us over an email, info at ChakraTattoos.com, and John, Megan, or myself will get back to you and get and you on our schedule. We could also do a Chakra Out Loud on the road, so we, we could also go to your business and do Chakra Out Loud right at your location. And spotlight um, you. And spotlight you hey. and your business um, to get everybody out there. Let's push each other. You already know. We say what we say. And you don't get upset. Hey guys. <laughs>